spoke to my coworker in the grocery store and found out that I didn't actually work on Fridays. Have you ever told a lie and had it blow up right in your face? That happened to me in the worst way possible. What started as a little white lie got bigger and turned into an avalanche, impacting my life and especially my relationship. I am a 34-year-old woman and until this whole thing happened, I had an amazing life. I work in the marketing department of a multinational company in Los Angeles. My husband is a 35-year-old engineer and everyone used to see us as the perfect couple, a happy and successful pair with no kids. All of our married friends secretly envied us for living the fun and free life of a couple not stuck in a rut. I don't want to get ahead of myself, so let me tell you how we met. I fell in love with my husband because he was the most free-spirited, fun, and spontaneous man I had ever met. We started dating because my best friend married his best friend. I was a bridesmaid. He was the best man, and we walked down the aisle together. From that moment on, I couldn't keep my hands off the man in the Armani suit. He was sweet, romantic, and treated me like the only woman in the world. That's why three years and a few months after our best friend's wedding, it was my turn to walk down the aisle, but this time towards the love of my life, not next to him. We've been married for four years. The first couple of years were amazing. He treated me like any woman wished to be treated. He was quite literally Prince Charming. About a year and a half ago, things started not to be as cute and fun as they used to be. My husband was going through a crisis at work. For the first time in his life, he hated his job, and I guess that led him to hate our life together. Every day he came home from work stressed and burned out. We argued every single moment and couldn't even look at each other without causing an explosion of arguments, insults, and screams. My big solution was to stay away from home as much as I could. I usually didn't work on Fridays, but I told my husband that my boss needed me at the company religiously every morning and afternoon on Fridays. He obviously didn't care or show any interest in the matter. Yes, I lied, but I couldn't feel any guilt about it. I just needed to be alone. My Fridays ended up being even more depressing than my marriage. I would show up at divorcee bars before noon, drink, and complain about my life to the bartender on duty. When I needed to sober up, I'd go to the closest McDonald's or any other fast food chain to eat my feelings away. One of those Fridays, I walked into a downtown LA bar and met the hottest bartender I had ever laid eyes on. He was 24, had more tattoos than I could count, and was an aspiring musician. I started going there at lunchtime every week. The bar was usually empty during the day, so he listened to my issues while making me very strong drinks on the house. I started thinking about him every day. I woke up thinking about what drink he'd serve me next Friday and what song he'd play on his guitar at the little stage inside the bar. I thought about him while I had dinner with my husband, while we visited our families on the weekend, while we celebrated our anniversary. I simply couldn't get him off my mind. I felt horrible for not being able to control these thoughts and feelings because I was still a married woman with a husband who, despite treating me badly because of his stress, still loved me. My sense of guilt and regret disappeared on a regular Thursday. That night, my husband was angry about having to go on a work trip over the weekend. He didn't have a single day off for months and was too tired to travel. I told him to quit his job because we didn't have any financial problems and he could easily get a job in a company that wouldn't burn him out. He immediately started yelling at me because I didn't think he was capable of overcoming it. What happened the day before only motivated me to go to my favorite bartender and ask if he lived nearby. It turns out he did. It was actually very close. You can imagine what happened. It was so good I could barely remember my own name, let alone remember I had a husband. If anyone had asked me before that day, I'd have said only unworthy people have affairs. I would also have said the same thing while having an affair. But inside, this thought was outshined by the imminent feelings of freedom and pleasure. I spent the weekend at my new lover's apartment. I wouldn't have been surprised if he lived in a dump, but it was actually quite acceptable. It had to be because I lived with my husband in a residential neighborhood with very nosy neighbors. Downtown LA was far enough for me to hide this part of my life efficiently. Little did I know it wasn't just the location of the affair I should have worried about. My husband returned on Monday and finally took a day off. He asked me to take it with him so we could, after long months, spend quality time together. We had lunch and spent the afternoon at Venice Beach. That day he said he was sorry for the way he treated me and he hoped things would change in the future. I knew it was too late. I had already gotten my hands dirty and felt dirty for what I did. Since I had involved myself in the mess, there was no reason not to keep enjoying it, or so I thought. I saw the bartender every Friday afternoon and a few other nights throughout the entire year. His shifts changed often, so we'd spend the entire morning together, usually at his apartment, at our house if my husband was traveling, and at hotels on a few occasions. It felt like I had developed an addiction. 
I was addicted to a 24-year-old bartender. At first it was fun and euphoric, but the more I got involved, the deeper I drowned in guilt for what I was doing to my husband. During this year, my husband's work got back on track and finally calmed down. He was almost himself again, but mentally and physically exhausted. He started going to therapy and I suddenly became his priority again. He would cook for me every night, ask about my day, relax me when I was stressed at work, take me out on dates, hang out with my friends, and turn us into the perfect couple again. But it was different. There was a big stain on our relationship, one only I saw because I was the one hiding it. I felt sick with guilt, but I ignored it. I didn't have the guts to end my affair or tell him. I would break the man who did everything for me, who loved me since the day we met, only because I was selfish during a hard phase. I was a coward spending the week with my husband and a day with my bartender. In the past couple of weeks, I've been working late on a new project at the company. I started to get home at 9 p.m. and even work on Fridays, which were the only days I left early for imaginary reasons. A few days ago, my husband texted me saying he was going to the grocery store, which we used to go to together, but I was at work, so I just sent him a list of things we needed. Evan. That night I got home, we ate dinner he cooked, and went to bed just like any regular day. But he knew something I didn't. He knew he had just figured it out. We woke up normally on that Friday morning, both got in our cars, and went to work. It was just a normal day. I worked, had lunch with my co-worker, and then got not-so-normal news. She ran into my husband in the grocery store. They talked about me, about how hard I was working on the project. She made a joke. It was the first time I saw her come to work on a Friday, she joked to my husband. I almost passed out when I heard it. She obviously didn't know about the affair, but she commented on how weird his reaction was. He stared at her with lost eyes and walked away. It was past time to end my affair. After lunch, I drove straight downtown. I didn't know if he knew if he was going to ask why I wasn't working on Friday, if he assumed I was cheating on him or anything else because he didn't say a word the night before. I felt my marriage could still be saved. Maybe my husband didn't know it yet and I could still save us. Even if he didn't figure it out, I still lost his trust for lying to him for almost two years. I needed to fix things, and I was starting by breaking up my affair. I walked into the bar like I had seen a ghost. I explained what happened to the bartender. He tried to argue, saying I could finally get divorced and be with him, but deep down he knew it wasn't possible. He knew we were just an affair with no future. He followed me into the bar parking lot and kissed me for the last time. He then watched me walk away to the furthest part of the parking lot. I always parked there to keep my car hidden from anyone who might see me. I turned around and he had already returned inside the bar. I didn't feel any lighter for ending things. Either way, I didn't have time to think about the guilt. When I got to my car, my husband was standing in front of the driver's door. He was trying hard not to cry and I was trying not to pass out, knowing he had seen me kiss another man. He didn't say a word. Again, he just walked away, got in his car and drove off. I went home figuring he wouldn't go back to work after what he'd seen. I felt relieved when I saw his car parked where it usually was. Finding him in the kitchen crying made me feel even worse. I'm sorry was the only thing I could say before falling into tears. He repeatedly asked me how I could have done this to him. I also had the same question running through my head. I didn't think he would actually talk to me at home, but he did. He asked so many questions and explained he had installed a tracker in my car because he felt suspicious and didn't want to accuse me of having an affair. Now he could. He asked me when it started, if anyone knew about it, where I met him, if he had ever been to our house, if I was in love with him, and many other things. I answered them honestly. I owed it to my husband because I made vows of honesty the day we got married. He looked at me like I was a stranger to him. His heart was broken because of me, someone who swore to love him until death. He packed a few bags and went to his parents' house. We didn't discuss anything about divorce, but I knew I'd get the big papers in my mail. There was no chance for us to be saved. I ruined us. I broke us. I lost an amazing husband and the amazing life we had together. Three days have passed since he left. I can only think about our argument. I keep reliving his reactions, his questions, and his expressions in my head. I decided to write this to finally get it out of me, reflect on how everything happened from the start, and somehow figure out when I lost all my senses to the point of doing this to my husband. Our marriage ended in the worst way possible. If I had the ability to go back in time, I definitely would. I am not in the position to offer relationship advice, for sure anyone in the world would be better at it right now. There is only one thing I wish I could say to people who wish to get married. A marriage changes everything in your life, it's completely different from any regular relationship. A marriage isn't just two separate people having a relationship and a life together. When you make this decision, 
Your two lives become one and your marriage becomes your priority over anything else. The end of a marriage isn't like any other breakup. I don't know exactly why, but it feels like a virus spreading through your soul and destroying your hopes for love. Marriage is something extremely serious and a lot of people aren't cut out for it. I guess I am one of them. Our wedding photo album is next to my bed, haunting me every night. I can't stop going through our pictures and seeing how happy we were that day. I destroyed something genuine and beautiful. <laughs> when I went through other breakups, it felt like a new page was about to turn in my life. Now I feel like I have forced an end to the story. There are no pages next. It's over, and it's my fault. We were supposed to grow old together, but we won't. Please be careful with your decisions when you are married. Your spouse should be the biggest part of the equation, and your relationship should come as a priority before yourself when making them. If prioritizing your significant other over yourself sounds like a nightmare, trust me, dating is the best for you. I prioritized myself and look what happened. My husband can't even look at me. He sent his brother to our house to get everything that belonged to him because he can't bring himself to see our old life together without remembering the mess I made in his life. I hope you can learn from this story and not make the same mistakes I did. I regret it deeply and wish I could change the past. Update. Two months have passed since I published my story here. I have a few updates on the situation, but first I will answer some of your questions. Firstly, many people ask me this. I don't think I was actually in love with the bartender. I'm sure I would be if I were his age. A tattooed musician is at the same time heaven and hell for a 20 year old girl, but I guess he was just a distraction, a toy I played with when I was bored. But I sure did like him because I felt his age when I was with him. I was 34, living in a fair. Some would say I was desperate to feel the most young feeling ever. Butterflies in my stomach. I guess it was true when the affair started. I realized something. The excitement I felt with the bartender was only a third of what I had felt with my ex-husband. My first kiss with him made my stomach turn upside down, and I immediately knew he would be mine. My first kiss with the bartender was purely adrenaline for doing something wrong and finally receiving the attention I had been begging for from my ex-husband for six months. Many people asked if the bartender initially knew I was married. He did. I guess at the beginning he hit on me just to make me feel better because it was a little pathetic having the same woman show up at a bar in the morning and complain about her depressing marriage. At least for him it was an adventure. He can't even be blamed for breaking up a marriage because I did that myself without help. So yes, I saw the bartender a few times during these couple of months, but we just talked. He admitted he was in love with me. I said I really couldn't be with him. He accepted it and I guess we are kind of friends now. He offered me some type of support during my divorce. He didn't judge me, and all I needed was to talk to someone who wouldn't judge me. I hope he can find a girl who loves him the way I loved my husband. He is actually a sweet and romantic guy who deserves more than a married woman. In some other comments, you guys asked if my husband ever went after the bartender. Initially, he didn't, but when we officially started the divorce, he showed up at the bar and had a long conversation with my former lover. He wasn't violent or anything because he was never that kind of guy. I was always so proud of that when we were married. The bartender apologized to him and he sort of accepted it. His problem was never really with the bartender, it was with me. Speaking of divorce, let me tell you about the freak show this was. A week after my husband found out about the affair, he called me saying we needed to meet with our lawyers to discuss how we would separate our assets. I didn't question it because it was an unspoken agreement that we'd get divorced. I never thought it would be a living hell. But on the day of the meeting, my husband wanted to take absolutely everything, and he even wanted to sell the house. None of that made sense since from the beginning of our relationship, we bought everything together, each of us paying half of everything. He used the cheating as an argument for why he deserved to take everything, something our lawyers had to repeatedly remind him that it doesn't make a difference in the divorce since we are not in the 19th century. My guilt about the cheating could still exist, but I wasn't going to let him walk out with things we accomplished together. So of course I bought the fight. We argued on the phone, through emails, personally, even through our lawyers. That's when my mother-in-law got in the picture. She asked me to go to her house and made her son be there also. Over lunch, she thought she could magically fix our problems. She said she wanted us to go to couples counseling, whether it was to try to work on our problems or at least not murder each other during the divorce. She said in front of him she didn't think the cheating was a big deal because, according to her, every lasting couple goes through it. She even said he wouldn't even be born if she hadn't forgiven his father for cheating on her. My ex was very upset and angry that day, but he accepted her terms. I never really understood the terms in their family, but they are very financially involved with each other. 
so I guess there were things he'd have to give up if he didn't do what she asked. When I was leaving, she told me not to give up on our marriage because he'd eventually forgive me. I said I doubted it, and she simply answered that his father had forgiven her, so there was no reason her son wouldn't do the same for me. I cried a lot after leaving that lunch, firstly because I missed him, but I also missed his family, who always treated me better than my own. It was sad realizing how wrong my mother-in-law was because he would never in his life forgive me. We promised her we would try couples counseling, but only to be nicer to each other during the divorce and be mature enough to not let our emotions get involved with the legal aspects of our marriage. We went to two sessions a week for a month with a very well-recommended therapist. We talked about everything that was going on before the affair. My ex-husband revealed things about his mental health at the time, which I could never have imagined. At first, I felt horrible during the sessions, but we started talking during them. Our divorce started progressing in terms we both agreed on, and by the end of the month, we finally had closure for our relationship. He hadn't forgiven me, but he had accepted our end, which made things a little calmer. After a long and exhausting process, we got divorced, and each of us got what we wanted. I was grateful for being able to keep the house. It took us so long to find it, and I loved living there, even if I was alone. I don't know where he moved or what he is doing, but I hope he is okay. He definitely deserves some peace, and he is getting it away from me as he wished. Update. Nah. I don't know if anyone still remembers my story, but I am the woman who had an affair on Fridays and told my husband, now ex, that I was going to work. A month has passed since my last update. A few things happened, and I will tell you all about it in my official final update. For all of you who called me very ugly names, you'll be happy to know my husband has a new girlfriend. Let's hope this one is faithful to him. I felt slightly jealous when I heard it, but seeing their pictures, I'm still friends with his brother's wife, that's how I know. They seem really happy, and I guess I'm glad for him. He deserves a new, uncomplicated relationship in his life. Updates on the bartender. It was his birthday last week and he invited me to the party, and I showed up for absolutely no reason. I wanted to see how he was, so I bought him a bottle of whiskey and went to a 20-something party. I feel the need to tell you he came to my house after the party. Reminiscing about our affair was fun, but I just didn't need to remember this shameful time in my life. I told him and now I'll tell you about my news. I am moving to New York because of a job offer. I'll finally be able to actually forget this whole thing ever happened and start over in a new place, away from my past. One lesson I learned was to promise myself I would never make that same mistake again. I broke my own home because of it, and still get chills in my spine anytime someone mentions cheating. I hope I can someday be in a happy relationship again, but for now I'll focus on my career and try not to screw that up also. Thank you for reading me. I hope I could entertain you with my awful decisions. Please take me as an example of what not to do to your significant others. The guilt is not worth it, and I mean it. I will now probably delete my Reddit account because if I get any notifications about cheating stories, I'll psychologically throw up remembering all that happened. Bye-bye.